Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Nicole Newman coming live from Philadelphia on my self care Sunday. Self care Sunday has to be my second favorite day of the week. I decided to change my video series to a weekly video on business and a weekend video on personal development. And personal development drives my business. So I spend a lot of time on personal development. Last Sunday, I talked about how you need discipline to do the things you don't want to do. And I went over six, I wouldn't call them habits, but six mindsets that stop me from achieving financial stability. So now I want to give some details on how I changed my mindsets in order to get the financial stability I need to build wealth. Now, everybody's journey will be different. For the last five years, I've had to pay tuition of some sort. So this is the first year I don't have to pay tuition. So now I'm in a position to actually start building wealth. And to me, building wealth means debt management. So that's the first part of my wealth building that I'm actively working on. So let's let's start with what did I need to change? Uh, what did I need to change about my thinking in order to do the things that I didn't want to do? That's wealth is in your head. Is is that easy? Wealth is right here. It's how you think that determines your financial position. So what I can say is where you are now is a product of your thinking. So in order to get to someplace different, you have to think differently. And you can't think differently without getting new information. So the first thing I didn't want to do is I didn't want to practice my spirituality. Mm, I wasn't ready. I submitted or I became a Muslim because I was called. I didn't think about what that meant. I just knew I was called. Now, I was called when I was about 14. I had a Muslim girlfriend and her sister went to college. And when her sister went to college, that was my social proof that I too could do it. Her sister was like four or five years older than me. So I looked up to her. Um, and I knew I wanted to be Muslim then at that point. And it took me 24 years to gather the courage to actually embrace something new. That means I was leaving behind everything I had previously thought, I had previously was doing, I had previously believed in. I was leaving it. And there is no ifs, ands, or but. You have to embrace all of this land. It's not the things you like and the things you don't like. You have to do them all. And that's the discipline. So what I couldn't see at that time is that Islam was teaching me the discipline I needed to change my financial trajectory. And I didn't see it at that point. All I saw was Islam was asking me to do things I didn't want to do. So I, I had a very flu influential man in my life. And he was like, Islam and prayers of five times a day are just 50 minutes a day. So you can give 23 hours to everybody else. You can't give 15, 50 minutes to a law. So when I looked at it from that perspective, I said, oh, I can do this. But Ramadan helped me get there because Ramadan is disciplined all the time, all 24 hours for a month. And that's the point of Ramadan, is that if you can do it for 30 days, you can do it for 360. So as I was going through Ramadan, I've gotten better. Absolutely. Now I'm in year number 12. <sighs> what I can also say is the other things that were said to me are not motivators. Fear of a law is not a motivator for me. Love of a law is a motivator for me. Fear means I'm scared. Love means I'm embracing you. So I didn't want to be scared. 
So I had to change what they were saying to something that would motivate for me. And when Allah dragged me and kicked me because I wasn't listening, then I watched him pull me out of situations I didn't think I could get out of. In order for him to do that, I had to submit because I didn't know what submission meant. I constantly told him no. I said, I'm not doing that. In my thoughts, I said, I'm not doing that. In my words, and I said, I'm not doing that in my deeds. I was given opportunity after opportunity to get it together, but I wasn't, I wasn't tuned in. I wasn't tuned in from the information that was in my head and did it move to my heart? Because Islam is not just the rules, but your emotional attachment. And I didn't have an emotional attachment because I didn't understand submission. <laughs> I used to get in my way. And I thought really that everybody got their way. So it wasn't just me. I saw the world from my perspective. And in my perspective, I get my way all the time. So asking me to not get my way sounded a little foreign to me. Are you serious? People do that? <laughs> but submission means that I trust his vision for me more than I trust myself. So I had to watch him pull me out of situations that I didn't think I could get out of. And that's when it moved to my heart. And that's when I really understood that he is leading me. I don't have to lead myself. I just need to follow the path laid out before me. Okay. So then I pray out of love, not fear. So my prayer and everything I do can be out of love because I need to practice gratitude. I was a brat. I thought everybody got their way. Everybody does not get their way. And I've gotten my way for so long that I can't believe my life. I really can't. So I'm very honored to be Muslim. I'm very happy that he chose me. I didn't choose him. He chose me. So he has a plan for me. So that was how I changed my mindset to understand that discipline is needed and I have a pathway to practice it. So not practice it will be ungrateful. No, I can't be that because I've been ungrateful. So I don't want to continue to be ungrateful. So that's how I changed my mindset to start practicing my spirituality. Number two, I didn't want to be in a relationship. <laughs> I didn't want to be in a relationship because I had saw so many bad relationships that I didn't want to be in another bad relationship. So I had friends who let me know that you have to put God at the center of that relationship. So I just became Muslim like 12 years ago. So why would I get in a relationship if God wasn't the center of it? God still needs to be the center of it because that's our accountability. And I will tell you that I attracted the type of men who were just like me. Spoiled, got in their way, selfish, and when I understood that I was attracting these men, then I had to change my energy to attract a different caliber of men. And so far it's been working. But I didn't know that relationships were a wealth building tool. I didn't find that out until I went to a class for teachers who wanted to teach financial literacy. I think I went to that class in 2018. The very first class of a five-day session just said, wealthy people are married. I was like, what? Wealthy people are married? I, nobody had ever said that to me. So you grow up around a whole bunch of single moms, you don't, you don't see marriage. And the only marriage that I saw that worked was a Muslims. So I had to wait until I got to Islam to even start considering it. And then I had to find people who put God at the center of their relationships. 
Because just somebody, just because somebody says they Muslim doesn't mean they put God at the center of their relationships. So I had to separate who was really Muslim and understood marriage as a world building tool than who was just playing a part. And there are a lot of people who are just playing a part. And I was playing a part for a long time until, until I committed, until I understood what submission meant. So now, now, now I can be in a relationship and I'm working towards that because I think relationships require a level of communication that I haven't seen in a long time. Not to say it can't be done, but that relationship has to have a friendship. If there's no friendship there, there's no common interest or common ways of communicating with each other, with each other. And if there's no respect, then there's no relationship. So just because you have a relationship, I want it to be a pretty one. I want it to be one full of love. I want to be one that's God focused because those are the relationships that can build wealth. So I changed my mindset. I got new information. So let's go on to the third one. <laughs> third one it was where I am right now. I didn't want to be disciplined in my food budget. Now, y'all know that's a struggle for me. It was a struggle because I had to evaluate myself and understand that I use food as a love language and I didn't recognize it. Now, I was doing it, but it wasn't conscious in my mind. So my food budget was ridiculous. I actually told the law, I told you, I, I say things all the time, that my food budget was by line in the sand. I will cut my expenses on transportation and housing, but don't touch my food. That's what I actually said. <laughs> I have to laugh at myself because I can't believe I said it. So I, I had to eat my words and I'm really good at that. I'll eat that humble pie all day long because I know that in order to get to someplace different, I have to do different things. Man, this food budget is struggling. We struggle all the time, but I have people in my life who show me how to get food at a discounted price. I got my dad. <laughs> he gets information all the time. My mom and my dad are like me, and that's where I get it from. So I've, I've accepted it that I have to cut my food budget, and I accepted it because now... My student loans are $68,972.96. I cut off $1,000. It felt great. Oh, I sacrifice if that number keeps coming down. So I can see the results of cutting down on my food budget. Because every dollar that I'm not spending on food is going towards that student loan. I got four months. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I know it's going to, I, inshallah, it'll get done one way or the other. And it doesn't have to be my way. It'll get done because I'm making my intentions to do it every single day. That's why it's an honor to be called to do this work because I said I wasn't cutting my food budget. I actually said it. And I was just spending money on food and having a grand time. And I'm still doing that, but in a more cost-effective manner. Because my money is allocated every dime down to the penny until October 18th. <laughs> so I still have a month to go. That means we got to be disciplined. We got to fast. And I'm on my way to get my yoga class. So I'll get off of this video go to yoga, meditate, center myself, and come back and pray. Thank you for joining me.